Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and I'm here at the GTS Come and Play Day in Atlanta with Spencer Reeve from Cool Mini or Not. That's me. You're like a veteran. You've been I know. <laughs> I'm slugging it out for a while, man. You keep coming to these things, <laughs> and I keep recording you, and you brought another game with you. Yep. Thoughtful. This is... Queen's Necklace. Queen's Necklace. Can you tell me a little bit about the, the theme here, yeah. what we're doing? Yeah, sure. So the theme of Queen's Necklace, which uh, is actually an older game that we are republishing. Right. Days of Wonder made this game years ago. Uh, they allowed it to kind of go off store shelves. Uh, they never came back for a reprint. We uh, had the opportunity to publish it again, and we said, sure. We touched up the art. As you can see, it's kind of got this very Pixar-y, Disney-esque yes. art that we think brings a lot of style to it. And that helps uh, kind of bring the theme to life which is that it's, uh, it's France. We're working for the French uh, king and queen as rural jewelers. Right. That's a mouthful. <laughs> That's it's like good. a tongue twister, right? <laughs> and the idea is that we are trying to make the most beautiful jewelry we can for the queen to impress her. To do that, we have to consider what's in fashion. Right. Uh, and we have to get the rare stones that we need to make this jewelry pop off, as they said okay. in, in, in France. Yes. Get it popping. All right. And, that's uh, what they said. Yeah, that's what they said. Uh, so the idea is that we have these cards in front of us, and if we can be the, at the end of the uh, three cells, there's yep. three cell phases, at the end of these three cell phases where we th sell our jewelry to the, the king, queen and king, yes. uh, if we have the most uh, nobility points, prestige right. points basically, um, we will be granted nobility. We'll right. no longer have to we're, slave. We're kind of yeah. like the apprentice jewelers, right? Yeah, we're yeah. slumming it with yeah. jewels. I don't know how you slum it with jewels, but anyway. We're, you don't get to keep them. <laughs> no, you don't get yeah. to keep them. Show, and we're trying to do our best job to create the best stuff to get their attention. Totally right. And maybe we'll get a promotion. Yeah, and then you'll just be a duke. Right. The Duke of Earl. That's how it works, right? I think. I don't even know if Earl's in France. <laughs> I don't know. I I'm do, sure there is an Earl in France. I do know if we were playing this game that you would get to go first. Do you know why? Because uh, the first player is the person who's wearing the most jewelry. And I've got it. You've got me. And those nipple rings that no one can see. Oh! Okay, so. <laughs> those are secrets. Sorry, sorry. Listen, before, but why don't we show a little sample of gameplay? Yeah. Like, just show kind of what would happen on a yeah, turn. Yeah, sure. I've kind of jumped things ahead here like, like we're kind of in the middle yeah, of Yeah, we're this. in the middle of something. There's some devaluation going on. Uh, I've noticed that you're winning. That's weird that you set this up and you're winning. Just but yeah, it. so uh, let's say it's your turn. Okay. Um, and basically there's three phases. Right. There's an influence phase and there's a purchase phase. And in the influence phase, I can play as many influence cards as I want that I have in my hand. Yes. Right? Yes. Because the, the game is, the cards are a series of gems and jewels, but also characters that you can mm -hmm. play for their effects, right? Right, exactly. Which is where these guys come in. So I'm gonna play an influence card from my hand mm. and it's the thief. Ooh. All right, so the thief here, it says that I can steal a card, a random card from another player's hand. Right. So I'm going to steal a card from your hand. And normally you would just take a pool, but I'm going to play one of my counter influence cards, a reaction card, which is the Musketeer. I don't like the Musketeers. And he just shuts you down. He stops. He, he says, stops yeah, he says, no, man, I don't think so, not and, today. And, and thematically, I like this, this one's interesting because the Musketeer, if you have three of them, because there's three copies of yep. this one, if you have three of them, what does it say here? You can play three together during your turn to take the Queen's Necklace. Yes. Right? So that's another effect on top of this. Yeah, so yeah, there's two ways to use him. If you're, which is the idea of, with any kind of good Euro game, there's that ability to bank cards for later yes. use, basically, right? A little bit of secret knowledge, right? But you're using it now. I, well, me. I gotta stop you. All right, fine. I, I have, have another points. influence card. I will play that instead. Ooh. This is the courtier, courtier, courtier? Yeah. Um. Courtier, I, think <laughs> sure. is, I Thank believe you. is correct. Um, I know a lot about France. I can tell. Yeah. It's popping off with that French <laughs> talk. Um, so this one says if you have, that you gain three extra pounds mm -hmm. to spend during this round. Okay? You can't stop that. Yeah, can't I, I can't. And right. normally you would have 10. So let's make sure that people know you would normally right. have 10. Now you have 13. There's no money coins here. You just always have 10 when it's time to go, go by, which mm -hmm. I'm going to do now. Right. Okay? So I have 13. And you'll notice here we have a variety of different things on the tray. And each of them, the, the cost of them is wherever this clear token is. Mm -hmm. And these, these drop down over time as they're not chosen, right? Yes. The ones that stay out here longer get cheaper. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm loving the look of this. It's awful pricey, though. Uh, but I think I'm going to take it. And this is going to cost me eight mm -hmm. of my 13. So yes. I'll take that. And I add that to my hand, my collection that I have here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to grab another emerald. Ooh. For, and this one's a little cheaper. It's two. Mm -hmm. And the ring. Mm. The ring. I'll take that. That's going to cost me three. I'm going to actually use up all my money, which is perfect. Leftover money, you don't get to do anything with it. So This is a good example of what kind of the play style is with the game too, because right. I've seen you buy two types of cards plus a ring. Yes. To me, you're telegraphing your moves. What? Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's part Get of it. Get out of my head, Spencer. Yeah, 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 that's part of the game, is not only am I have to be very careful about what I'm doing when I play, right? Yeah. About what I'm, when I'm building these set collections, because that's where we're gonna get to next, but I also wanna make sure I'm paying attention to what you're doing, 
so that I go, oh, I think he is going in this direction for the next cell, right? Because you're right, during the scoring, which we're, where I guess we can probably just take a look at right now. I, well, here, at the end of the round, we yep. flip this over, right? I, yep. We would refill this, and we would devalue. Anything uh, that's still on the board. And it's so. still on the board, so this will go down as well. And, and yeah, go ahead. I think you're going to mention something with the X there. Yeah, right? if it gets, yeah. if it ever gets to the X, it just gets discarded and it gets replaced as well. Right. Because at this point in time, everyone's had a chance to buy it and nobody wants it, so it just goes away. Okay. Right. And if during that flip, one of the merchants came in, I just yeah. set them to the side so we could show this because yeah. these would normally be put in uh, at a semi-equal uh, place mm -hmm. in the deck. About a third each about way. About a third down. each way. Yeah. We're going to have what is a sale phase, right? A sale phase. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're going to take. Uh, our cards in our hands yep. and organize them into like groups of maybe I want to put a couple of those emeralds with a ring. I want to match them up with some of the different things I have and then we reveal, right? Right. Do you want to, do I just do that right now? We can kind of show how the scoring works? Sure, yeah. Okay, so we'll skip Spencer having a turn. I'm sure he wasn't going to do anything. I mean, yeah. <laughs> nothing <laughs> important. No, okay. Just like work. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm going to just show up and I'm not going to do anything. No one feels before. that way about you, Spencer. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. All right. Mm. We've organized our hands. Mm -hmm, mm. We're ready to dis display yes. our jewels. Okay. I'm ready. So we'll, we'll just drop them down here on the table. Yeah, I'm yeah. giving you the meat. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Okay, I don't know what evil right. things you're about to do. All right. Um, you know how you said that maybe I was telegraphing a little bit? Yeah, earlier? yeah. I think I, I think you might be right. <laughs> because I have put down here a whole batch of Ooh, emeralds. I have a, a ton lot of emeralds, emeralds. Right. And I'm pairing them here with a ring. Right. Okay? So rings, and there's also earrings. You pair those with some of your collections mm -hmm. to give them extra value, to help yep. you score more, right? Yep. And I also have a nice little collection here of, of rubies yep. as well. Now, we, of course, would have done this all before, and you can't look at what yeah, I've done yeah, and I, go and adjust I don't it. watch you play your set and then discern what I'm right. going to play. We would all basically pay, place face down, flip and reveal, yeah. right? So what have um, you got? So what I was going to play was the, I have two ambers, okay, right? And so those we'll put there from one of my piles. Sure. And then my next one is I play a diamond because I had it, Ooh, nice. you know, and yeah. luckily doesn't look like anyone else is playing no, one. not yet. And then finally, I actually play an emerald, and the reason why I play this emerald is because I'm just trying to, I didn't know how many you had, yeah. right? And then with a multiplayer game, I also know how many other people are going to play it. I'm just trying to get that out there to uh, kind of drown the market, right? Saturate the market with these green guys, this is, right? This is important because the value, what we're going to score here is going to be at least partially based, not just on the fashion, yes. which is established right, here, right. but the rarity. Mm -hmm. And so, as we look at this, emerald, there's so many emeralds. You got two of them. Yep. I put out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You burned out a ton of them. <laughs> so it's the least rare. Yeah. So it's wonderful I brought these emeralds. But the king and queen are like, well, look, everyone's got emeralds these days, right? And let me, let me also mention real yeah. quick that the reason why you might say, instead of just saying, like, well, I'm going to only play one emerald card, yeah. is because when you are playing with multiple players, it's only the person who puts out the most of a particular stone it's gonna score. that gets the score. Yes. So you do need to out stone, you need to have more stones, <laughs> yes. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you've got then, more stones than I do. <laughs> then, then, yeah, then the other player, but also if you go too far, you become the least rare, right? which in the case of your emerald, were already worth nothing because they weren't very fashionable. Let's, okay, well don't rub it in here. I'm just saying, a garbage <laughs> we'll hand is a garbage we'll hand. We'll see what happens, okay. <laughs> yeah. So rubies here, we got four of those. Yep. I think that's the second least rare, yep. so we'll say rarity here. Third. Oh, sorry, that's over here. Yep. The yep. Rubies. And then the diamonds. There's only there's one there's of them. There's only one, so it's it's uh this one is the most rare. Right. Because there's only one of them. So it's it's here. Yeah, it's the first. And then yep. Amber's, there's two. two. So there. So now the way we basically is I get to sell my diamond and I get to sell my ambers uh, because I have the most, the most of those. So I will get uh, Diamonds here. Diamonds here, let's start with diamonds. They're one point just because of fashion. Yep. And then plus three points because of rarity. So that's four points. Four so points green goes here, one, two, three, four. Okay. And then my ambers, I have two, so I'm gonna have, uh, they're the, sorry, we're in ambers. Wait, Am no, oh, sorry, right here, you're right. Man. <laughs> you're throwing me off. I know, I apologize. <laughs> you're trying to cheat. <laughs> I have a little bit. Uh, okay. <laughs> so they're gonna be uh, three points because they're very fashionable, yes. plus two points for being yeah, the no second Yeah, no wonder I wanted to score Yeah, that's yeah, way better. Yeah. So that's five, so yes. that's gonna bump me up to 15. So it doesn't matter how many ambers you have in terms of uh, it sure. doesn't affect the score, yeah. but it allows you to score. Yes, it allows you to score. Most of them. So, and again, that's the real uh, kind of the real science behind the game, yeah. right? The very uh, set collection and almost bluffing and wagering because right. I've got to wager whether or not you're going to play as many ambers as I'm going to play, more or less, but I also have to worry about saturating the market, right? Let's talk about those ambers for just one, or embers, or whatever this, emeralds. Your emeralds. emeralds. Let's you, talk you'll get those. it. You'll just take the long way around, man. I, I got there, <laughs> and boy did I ever get there. So I have the most, mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm going to score a zero because right. it wasn't very much in fashion. Right. 
and uh, it wasn't rare at all. I get another zero points for yep. that. You got zero for zero. But I threw this ring on here, and the ring lets you score that twice. Okay, so you got zero times Still two, baby. Zero. Yeah, okay, that's so good. That wasn't so great. <laughs> the, the rubies, the rubies, I do have the most of, and uh, that's gonna give me two points plus one more. Yeah. All right, so I'll get three points. Well, there you go. You're ahead of me now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. Okay, so I, I just, didn't do that so well. I just like the idea that the queen sees this and goes like, you can just put that in the garbage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, that emerald hey, ring, I don't need any emeralds. of that. Just get, get it. Wow. Yeah. So then we would just, again, keep continuing those rounds that we did the first, mm -hmm. right? Using our 10 to buy for every, influence cards. Everybody does this. Every, every player gets the three influence uh, phases during their turn, the three yeah. phases, which is influence, uh, purchase, and then deval devaluation. Right. And then when you randomly get a merchant card shows up, you do what we just did. Yeah. Number of players, every, depending on how many number of players it is, everybody puts their hands down right. and reveals. And, right? they, and the game ends when you reach the third merchant? Yep. You is do your right? final sell. Okay. And then we look at where everybody falls on the uh, chart here, basically, it tracks yeah. how many victory points everybody has. Pretty straightforward. Very I mean, straightforward. I, the, the thing where you end up with, with some of the extra rules are the different characters and mm -hmm. their different abilities. There's a variety of different so, ones. They play at different times. Some of them you put in front of you to right. give you an ongoing effect. Some are like I did there. I played Influence. You reacted to it. Yeah, and right. this is this is a game that Bruno Cathala and Bruno Fiduti did together right. uh, many years ago. Uh, back in, like I said, early 2000s, and then it was published until I think 2009. And we kind of thought this was a good one to bring back because people do have uh, fond memories of this. And it's something that people know. Uh, in the new art, in and the you've new board, up a notch in yeah, terms of the production, right? right. And right? you know, you have the board that actually tracks victory points. There, this didn't, this nice setup used to not exist, right? Okay. So this is what kind of the production elements we've added to the game since. So I want to know: is this available now? Uh, this is going to be available November fourteenth. Okay, uh, 2015. 2015. Yes. Yeah, we're yeah, no 2000. Well, you just never know if you're going to watch now, this. Oh, that's true. Right? 2015, November fourteenth, <laughs> 2015. And how many players? Uh, it is two to four. Okay, it's excellent. Two to four. Yep. Now, along with showing us this, mm -hmm. your generosity doesn't end there. You oh, brought no. some other things to show, yes? Something very cool, little sneak peek type oh, thing. Oh, good. All right, well, let me clear this away and let's, let's get it out. Sounds great. Okay, we're back with more cool minis and stuff. Yes. Lots of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> this may look a little familiar to you if you're familiar with Arcadia Quest. Yeah. If you aren't, then uh, actually we have a series on our channel showing you how to play and doing a full playthrough of Arc Arcadia Quest, which you can check out. Mm -hmm. But this is... Arcadia Quest 2? It's Arcadia, Arcadia Quest, Quest New? Arcadia Quest New. <laughs> okay. By Rodney Smith. Designed by Rodney Smith. <laughs> oh, I no, wish I could say that. Eric no. would kill me. <laughs> Arcadia Quest Inferno. Okay. And the theme in this one is uh, there used to be these angels that were protecting the city of Arcadia. Yes. Uh, in the great battle between good and evil. Unfortunately, uh, the sneaky uh, underlord, which is this big dude in his rock throne. Is this? This is just for display, right? Like <laughs> he's in the game. Oh this is his miniature in the game. Uh, <sighs> it's actually funny because his miniature in the game has this rock throne and the fluff that they've written for the stories. He doesn't like to get up. Okay. So he's always in a rock throne. All, right. so, all the time. All the time. Uh, so he's found a way to trap these angels and be. Now that they're no longer defending Arcadia, right? He's pulling the city down to him. Okay. Uh, so that he can in basically, hell? yeah. Well, Inferno. Inferno. It's right. kind of you know, Arcadia is kind of a cartoony world, right? Right. right. So a little it's, lighter than that. It's, it's a little Inferno. lighter. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's not hell. Come down for a light toasting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> right. uh, and so basically, the heroes from Arcadia, which yeah. the city of Arcadia had many, many heroes. We have a whole new set of heroes. We have new guilds. Because yes. you remember in Arcadia, the guilds are fighting to save the city and get loot. Yeah. But they don't really get along. Right. Because they want to be the heroes, yep. and they want to have the most gold and the most, most weapons, so they don't want to help share with the other guys. So it's the same thing you got from Arcadia gameplay-wise. Right. It's going to be, you know, I'm playing to kill monsters, you're playing to kill monsters, and sometimes we kill each other. Yeah. And we have these quest cards that kind of have uh, give us objectives during the scenario. We have a campaign system, so as I level up and get better weapons, I also... Um, Keep that stuff for the next time we carry forward. Right, and this is—it's an expansion, but no, it's—it's it's like its own complete separate mm -hmm. game. But you can plug it into plug the it in and play it with. So you can mix and match the characters, you can, the heroes, the monsters, and yep, exactly. Okay. So the monsters are all based on a tier system. Yeah. So you can actually pull monsters from Arcadia Quest into Arcadia Quest Inferno right. or Inferno into Arcadia Quest. So because you basically have like these different tiers of monsters. So if you go oh, like all oh, this tier and this one uh, scenario, I'm gonna change them out with the guys from Inferno. Sure. Or I'm going to change them out with the guys from original. And of course, you can just play your own little scenarios too and make up whatever you want, yeah. mixing things And a lot together, of people right? do build their own little scenarios and stuff right. like that. Um, you know, it's not something we officially support, but obviously it's easy to do. Yes, right. right. Um, so basically, as we mentioned, you have new heroes and new monsters, but there's also new mechanics. Okay, tell me about that. Yeah. So one of the things that we have now is 
we have a, a mechanic called Damnation. Okay. So now that the city's in Inferno, right. you can kind of be corrupted All right. or be damned yes. by the surroundings, which makes you more powerful, but can also punish you later. Okay. So a couple ways that that works is, um, I take Damnation, for example, some weapons like this lance here. Yes. Uh, it's called the Vile Trident. It's a lance type weapon. Okay. Uh, I can take a one Damnation token, and maybe I'll put it on Mark. This guy. Yes. I would put it on Mark. There's a little pro and this is prototype, this right? This is all prototype yeah. stuff, except the plastics are final. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so good too. So give him some damnation. And now he's gonna get to roll a plus one die. Okay, so we'd normally get the two dice, now he's gonna get another one. So yeah. I really need that extra die. I can take a little damnation, yep. corrupt my soul a little bit here, yep, and then yep. I'm gonna roll the, a little better. Yeah, and the inverse of that is we have a shield that kinda is complementary to that, right? It's it's this shield, you take one damnation and you roll one defense die. So okay. this is one plus uh, attack die. This is plus one defense die. Well, this all sounds great. So where's the where's the bad part of this? So the bad part is because I'll be just um, doing that all day long. There are <laughs> exactly well, you, even though there's a bad part, you'll still be doing. I that probably all will day still long. be doing. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> This guy, for example, yeah. uh, his special ability is that for every damnation, he's the judge. Okay. For every damnation uh, token a character has on them, when that when he attacks that character, he go he rolls plus one attack die per damnation token. Per damnation. Oh, so okay. if you had like right, four right. or five on you, yeah, right. This guy jumps up <laughs> to rolling a ton. He rolls yes. like nine, along with eight his regular, or nine dice, yeah. seven or nine, like it just a huge amount of dice. There's also um, these. Uh, what we call brimstone cards. Okay. And these brimstone cards, uh, players activate them by uh, stepping on them and then spinning an action to open them. And when you open them, uh, they flip over and they say, they give you, sometimes they uh, they do damage to you, but very rarely does that happen. More likely they do something to other players. Oh, okay. And on other players, it'll be things like, oh, uh, you get, the person with the most damnation on the board, you can move them back to their starting area, or you can give them a wound, or you can make them exhaust a card. Okay. So I can also use, the fact that you have a ton of damnation on you when I use these uh, brimstone cards to kind of hurt your uh, strategy as you play through. So there's more effects. Are, are the characters, because there's more heroes now, mm -hmm. is it the same level of complexity in the gameplay, or what, do you, what have you guys done there? That's a great question. So the thing is, because we assume mm -hmm. um, that most players have played Arcadia Quest who are going to be interested in Inferno, uh, there's actually a little bit of a step up in complexity in the characters. Okay. So for example, Mark here, uh, his special character ability is that he doesn't exhaust uh, attack cards. So if you remember in Arcadia Quest 1, yeah. every time you used a sword yeah. or a shield or something, if, it's just, as long as you use something, you had to exhaust it's, it's it. That's right. You if couldn't use it again until it refreshed. Until you rested. Until it took a whole turn. Yeah, it took a whole turn for you to reset, right? Yeah. He actually doesn't exhaust cards as long as he's close to an ally. Ah, so okay. close being any square yeah. next to him or yeah. the same square as him, right? Right. So in that case, that's kind of a... He sticks with his buddies, yeah. but the idea of using close as a way to benefit is like a little more complex than last right. time, although we had some characters that kind of dabbled with sure. that. Uh, another example of things being a little more complex with the characters is Sybil. Yeah. Sybil is a witch, and she deals in dark magic. By using her character ability, she takes a death curse card, and she lives with whatever the death curse is, but she gets a, 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 an, extra defense, or, sorry, an extra attack die when using a magic card. But she has to take a, a death yeah, curse. So yes. if, it, if it comes out as nothing, it's no problem, but then right. she can actually get a pretty significant wound potentially there. <laughs> yeah, and what's cool about that is that they took a con they took a punitive uh, concept from the last game, like yes. a punitive mechanic that said, hey, you have a death curse. Mm -hmm. You know, this time they've taken it and they've baked it into the actual gameplay right, session, gotcha. as opposed to just the between, the between the session, okay. like the kind of like uh, bookkeeping section, right? right? They've moved it in into that. So there's one other big thing too that we, uh, we should cover, which what's is that? these guys right here. These yeah. angels. Remember I talked about the captured angels, right? Yeah. So these captured angels um, can be captured, or freed, I should say. They can be freed by uh, a guild. So if this guy were to die, and Mark comes through and captures this angel, he yes. frees her. She actually becomes a part of my guild. Oh, okay. So okay. I have three heroes, right. but midway through the campaign, I might free an angel. And then she'll cycle back into my guild to help me out because she owes me. So you, you remove one of your... You pick one of your heroes to get rid of, and you bring one of the angels in. So we have an angel card right here, okay. which is this dude. Um, so you can you bring him in, and you can kind of tell these guys who are a little more powerful than your regular heroes. Well, this is interesting because you know when you're playing a campaign, mm -hmm. you pick your three at the beginning, and more or less you're stuck with that yep. choice, right? But this gives you a little bit in the in the middle of a campaign, you might be like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap out one of these characters. Exactly. And maybe it helps you adjust to some of the things happening amongst the other players, right? Exactly. Like this power is gonna be better for the the people I'm facing here. Right? Yeah, and you know, it also during the, these guys are not in every scenario. Remember in Arcadia Quest, there's right. scenarios. These guys are in a few of the scenarios. Okay. And sometimes when you have scenarios, you have to make a choice. Yeah. Like I want to play this scenario as opposed to that scenario, right? 
So you might not be able to save all of these guys. And it, there's a possibility, maybe, mm -hmm. that the ones that you don't save, yes. they might get they might be in Inferno so long that they become Oh, they come back. Damned. Yeah, yeah. And they might come back. With a little vengeance. Like a little vengeance to be like, why don't you free me? Yeah. I was sitting Yo, there. Dog. I was sitting there, dog. <laughs> and you're just like, not right now, dude. I gotta go kill these guys. Okay. So uh, it, these guys can come. We have, uh, we have some mechanics for them to come back as maybe little mini bosses or something. All right. But also, you know, it's a nice, when they show up in the scenario, it's a nice motivating factor to go like, is everybody going to rush for the uh, the angel and try to power up their guild with right. that guy? So it kind of gives a, a very driven uh, quest. And do, it, do I want to risk leaving it behind to come back and haunt me later? Right, right. Too, right? Yeah. Okay. And or do I want to risk losing a really powerful yeah. uh, member of a uh, guild yeah. to you or somebody else, right? right? Like, So it, it's, it's kind of given the game another layer of complexity, but, you know, you can jump in without having played Arcadia Quest. Sure. Sounds totally like can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the game's still very simple. It's still dice-driven combat and you know simple move and attack rules. Yeah. Uh, but if you've played Arcadia Quest 1, not only do you get the benefit of the game plugging into each other, yeah. but you also get the benefit of already kind of knowing the basic rules. So the only thing you'll have to kind of, the only learning curve you'll have, right, yes. will be the damnation and the uh, kind of new types of cards, actually, especially these new weapon types. So we have this new weapon type, the Chakram, yeah. and what's cool about it is you can throw it, and it does uh, three, it needs three bows to hit. Yep. But you can also use it as a fist weapon, so when you get close to use it, you go for swords, and if you remember your dice, your swords are actually more likely to roll than your bows. Right. So yes. it's, it's kind of a universal weapon. It can okay. use swords or bows depending on your position to the thing that you're attacking. Gotcha. Uh, and then we have exotic weapons like the Katara, right? So these uh, exotic weapons, certain heroes are better at using them and that their special ability is like, for example, uh, this big dude right here, yeah. when, he, when he uses an exotic weapon, you don't roll defense when he uses an exotic weapon on you. It's just, he uh, just whatever he hits, hits. Yeah, whatever he does, does. Okay. So you give him exotic weapons and a lot of rerolls, and he becomes this kind of unstoppable killing machine, okay. right? So you can kind of see that they, they've, they've taken the combo system from the first game that everybody likes so much. Kicked it up a notch, maybe? Kicked it up a notch yeah. with new weapon types yeah. and new damnation uh, abilities. And then, of course, you can get these new guys to add into your guild. And, of course, a ridiculous amount of amazing-looking miniatures, yeah. right? So yeah. this is coming to Kickstarter, I presume? Yeah, it's going to be coming to Kickstarter sometime in November. We don't have an official launch okay. date yet, but uh, this was just a sneak peek to kind of show you what we got coming up. You can see how cute the miniatures are. <laughs> yes. This little, look at this Cerberus, man. That's that, the most adorable yes, that thing. Yes, it's pretty adorable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, want it chewing on my neck, but it does look <laughs> cute. Yeah. yeah. And so this is a little secret, and one of the things that we also point out is we added a lot of uh, contrast. The first Arcadia Quest was very, thematically it was supposed to be a very kind of uh, clean and pristine yep. city, um, pastel colors. Right. We've added more contrast, bright to reds and oranges. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so now there's, because it's supposed to be a darker, more fiery uh, okay. environment, so we have these bright reds and oranges with these kind of dark grays okay. and blacks, right? Yeah, it looks great. great. It really does. And I, I really appreciate you giving us this, this quick sneak peek. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure there's a few people out there as interested as I was in, in seeing this. So Awesome, yeah. I'm glad we got a chance to look at it today. Absolutely. Th well, listen, thank you, Spencer, mm -hmm. for the overview. Queen's Necklace. Of course. The tease here of our yeah. Kitty Quest new <laughs> Inferno. Yeah, Inferno. And uh, listen, to all the rest of you, thanks for watching. Thank you, guys. <laughs>